No one ever said building a business is easy. It takes progressive thinking, discipline, and an unwavering commitment to succeed. But has the spirit of entrepreneurialism been diminished in the wake of COVID-19? Or has it been refueled? Dr. Peter Klein is an economist. He's a professor of entrepreneurship at Baylor University. And he joins us now to look at how entrepreneurship is being reshaped today and what that means for the entrepreneurs of tomorrow. Dr. Klein, thank you so much for taking the time for us today. Oh, thank you so much for having me. Is it safe to say that entrepreneurship has been key to economy since the beginning of time? And how significant is that impact? Oh, I think you're exactly right. I think the, uh, the role of the entrepreneur is central in any kind of economic system. And in countries like the United States, for example, uh, entrepreneurship has played an especially important role. I, I want to clarify at the outset that when I talk about the entrepreneur, when I talk about entrepreneurship, I'm not referring only to the establishment of a new venture, which is the way many people think of, uh, uh, think of the function of the entrepreneur. That certainly is one function, but I'd like to discuss entrepreneurship in a slightly broader sense that would also include people who change or grow existing ventures or businesses, people who find new and better ways to do conventional things, people who sort of think outside the box, to use the cliche, uh, people who uh, exercise initiative and show creativity, uh, take responsibility, and so forth. All of those are central to having a vibrant entrepreneurial economy. We have had that in the past, but there have been concerns even before COVID that uh, entrepreneurial, this entrepreneurial culture uh, might be slowing a bit. Well, the pandemic certainly changed things overnight. I mean, how different are the challenges today for entrepreneurs versus those pre-pandemic? Yeah, so at a very practical level, a lot of the nuts and bolts aspects of creating ventures and running ventures and changing ventures are obviously much more complicated than they were before, you know, for very simple reasons. If you're in an area that's under lockdown orders, if your potential customers, employees, partners are sheltering at home, if they're unable to travel, obviously that's going to impede any kind of uh, social activity, including uh, starting a business or running a business. Um, there's uh, Small business owners have uh, uh, expressed concerns about uh, the, the, some of the relief packages that uh, have understandably been uh, popular in countries affected by COVID, I guess almost all countries, you know, provide some, it's difficult to hire people if people can uh, receive uh, assistance from staying at home, uh, th then the job offer has to be that much more attractive than it otherwise would be. That's something that you hear from some small business owners, restaurants, uh, uh, bars and so forth, if they're allowed to open, that some of their staff are better off staying home and receiving uh, some relief uh, relief payments than they are coming to work. You know, at the same time, though, there's an odd aspect to this. Whenever the uh, business environment becomes more difficult and more challenging, those who are especially clever, who are especially creative, can actually do better than they would in an environment where it's fairly straightforward or it's easier for anybody to engage in those activities. So some very clever entrepreneurs may be doing better than they otherwise would have done. Well, unemployment rates are through the roof in the U.S., yet while a large number of businesses have suffered during the pandemic, COVID-19 has also led to an increase in entrepreneurial activity. What are the businesses that are doing well doing right? It's a good question. Uh, if we, for the moment, include a, a broad range of businesses, including the larger ones, well, some of the larger ones are obviously doing quite well. Zoom, for instance, the platform hosting our conversation today has seen an explosive growth in uh, uh, its user base. You know, companies like Amazon, of course, are doing quite well as a substitute for the kind of shopping and even food deliveries uh, that people uh, did before. So there's a set of businesses that provide goods and services that are particularly valuable to people who are sheltering in place or are substitutes for the kinds of businesses in our towns and communities uh, that we normally patronize. They're of course doing uh, quite well. Businesses that uh, provide goods and services directly connected to pandemic relief, makers of hand sanitizer and ventures large and small making masks and uh, larger companies that make respirators and so forth are um, have seen a, an increase in their business, although that's not 
you know, the kind of demand increase that we would normally uh, want to see. You also have um, some medium sized and, and larger businesses that I don't know how to say it are kind of politically connected uh, and uh, whose services have been called upon by the authorities uh, to help uh, you know, people who make uh, uh, contact tracing apps, for example, uh, who, who uh, are well connected and are seeing an increase in their uh, in their business as a result of lockdown policies and other interventions that are designed to alleviate uh, the health situation. But uh, I think you also have to look for uh, businesses in all kinds of sectors or entrepreneurs in different sectors who do well under conditions of increased uncertainty, maybe who are better at kind of anticipating the way the market is going to go and they're in a better position than their rivals when you have all this craziness around us. And then there are those businesses that pivoted on the fly and just redirected their businesses to the times. Yeah, so many of us, you know, I'm in the higher education sector, uh, you're in the uh, media sector. Uh, there are lots of us who were forced to make a sudden pivot in the spring. Uh, schools, uh, K through 12 schools and higher ed institutions, you know, flipped from in-person to online. Uh, news media organizations began reporting, uh, you know, I assume you're doing this interview from your home. Uh, people started uh, leaving the studios and setting up studios at home. So many of us have pivoted de facto already. Now, of course, that's not possible if you're in the transportation sector or if you are an electrician who performs repairs and so forth. But, but you know, a lot of us have experience already at kind of turning on a dime. And one thing that I've noticed you know, in my industry, at my university, we're preparing for a kind of a mixed opening in the fall with some classes online and some classes in person and a number of structural changes. We're also anticipating, you know, or preparing for the likelihood that maybe circumstances will change in the middle of the semester as they did in the spring. And we have to pivot once again. So my point is, a lot of us in many different sectors of the economy are now thinking, okay, I need to do what I normally do and do it well, but I also need to be prepared to change on a dime and start doing things differently if any number of unanticipated circumstances arises. So a lot of us have learned or we are learning to pivot. And I think one feature of our economy going forward is an increased demand for and a pre increased premium placed on the ability to pivot when circumstances change. Well, there's no question that opportunities are going to lie ahead for those with the right stuff. What part of a business plan should would-be entrepreneurs be focusing their energies on with the thought of launching an entrepreneurial venture in the future? Well, uh, as, we're, uh, as we've just said, uh, flexibility is going to be key, maybe even more key uh, than it has been in the past. You know, normally when starting a new venture, building from the ground up, we often talk about the pivot, uh, the need to be flexible, because when you're introducing a brand new product or service, the market has never seen this thing before. You don't know how customers are going to react. You don't know how established businesses are going to react. We, we normally encourage entrepreneurs to do some scenario planning, right? Don't, don't fall in love and be rigidly committed to your original business plan because you may discover as you go that that plan has got to be uh, has got to be adapted to things you didn't anticipate. Well, now that kind of advice applies to everybody, not just people producing brand new, never before seen products and services, but even those of us producing very ordinary, mundane activities. In the you know we're we're, we're selling groceries or we're. Um, uh, you know, communicating or uh, transporting goods and services in trucks, all of those things, all of those industries now have to be thinking about, okay, wait a minute, what if my drivers cannot drive the truck because the roads are blocked or because they're required to stay at home or because there's no fuel available, right? I mean, the kinds of uh, stresses that we associate, it, associate normally with, you know, societies that are undergoing war or some kind of social uh, crisis, I don't want to be overly melodramatic, but but entrepreneurs in many different sectors, not just those starting out, have got to think more about flexibility and accommodating unanticipated change 
than they ever did before. And we'll see how that works out. Uh, will we all learn to make those adjustments or will this be kind of a, 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 a separator right now? The cream will rise to the top, so to speak. And we'll see entrepreneurship becoming much more difficult, but those who are able to do it successfully uh, will, will do extremely well. Well, as you say, even if you're not looking to start your own business, there are qualities of an entrepreneur that we could all adopt during this difficult time. Oh, you're absolutely right. Uh, all of us as, as individuals have learned uh, that there's a lot of uncertainty in the world around us, and we might need to do diff things differently uh, than the way we did before. Maybe, I don't want to talk about there being a silver lining to the current situation because I don't, I don't think of it in those terms. I mean, it's bad, right? What has happened is bad on a number of dimensions. It continues to be bad. Um, but, you know, we all have a lot more experience than we did before about handling uncertainty. Can we be a little bit more comfortable with uncertainties and risks in the future? If so, then at least we'll be a little bit stronger coming out of this crisis than we were going in. Absolutely. The way entrepreneurial business models are affected by the pandemic will no doubt have an impact on how entrepreneurship is perceived in the future. And we know, Dr. Klein, that you will be watching and tracking that. We thank you so much for taking some time for News Point today. Oh, you're welcome. Thanks for your uh, time and your great questions.